Before I go on too much farther here, I want to assemble my bell crank pivot assembly. Several parts that go along with that. We have these two upper and lower angles here that are going to go like this. We have a couple of press fit bearings that go in here on either side. There's a spacer that goes in between in here. Those will all go together like that. The bolt that goes through the middle of it to hold it all together. And then the bell crank will attach through here um, eventually. First I've got to drill a hole uh, in this spacer and then we'll uh, start the assembly from there. Drilled out the 3 16 um, for the AN3-6A bolt. Well, it fits a little bit too tight, so I'm gonna have to um, just run the drill bit through it a couple more times, hopefully to clear it out just a little bit so I can actually get this bolt to go into place. The uh, hole is just about perfect now. Kind of fits in there nice and snug, the way it should. Um, so there's two different sized um, spacers here, um, one for the left and one for the right, um, and that includes these spacer blocks as well. Um, I'm sorry, these uh, lower and upper angles. Um, they're slightly different sized on the left than they are on the right. This is the right one. Um, the left seems like it's a little more squat. So here's a comparison. This is the one for the left. Um, a bit shorter, the, the block's a little bit shorter that fits in there as well. Um, according to these assembly instructions here, I need to put these together before uh, I remount or uh, size this hole for the uh, for these bearings here. They're pretty tight already. I don't want to go too big, but I do want to kind of uh, match them up drilled all the way through. Um, and there shouldn't be really any play in there. It should be a, a press fit in there, but I don't want to damage anything trying to press it in uh, because it's too tight either. So. We'll try and clean out the hole a little bit and see if we can get that to fit. All right, I have a 7 16 inch drill bit here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and go through this slowly and try not to ream it out too big, but just get it to the right size. Seems like a pretty good fit there. It's still a bit tight. It's going to take a little bit of uh, effort to get that in there. Um, well, this side's a little too tight, I think. Try to go through it from the other side too. Yeah, that feels pretty good. All right, uh, to perform this uh, insertion, I've drilled a small hole into this little block of wood here, um, big enough that this can kind of fit inside of it. Um, and then this will fit over the top of this, and then this will go over this, and then I'll use a hammer and a piece of wood so that I don't do any damage to the, uh, to the bearing here. in place correctly and no damage was done uh, maybe to this piece of wood that got uh, a little bit of a bump in it from the, the bearing but seated very well in there all right I had to go on a hunt through all my parts to find these uh, bushings here um, you can see I need four of these two for each of the bell cranks um, and I'm supposed to lubricate them with lithium grease. It says white lithium, um, but I have some red lithium here. It's axle grease, but uh, this will work just fine for it. Um, that's what I'm going to go ahead and use. Um, put this thing all together.
All right, so working with an AN3 bolt, uh, you want to put this at about 22 inch pounds, which is about uh, you know, about two foot pounds, roughly. To turn it just a little bit so I can get the uh, can get the cotter pin in place here. All right, there we go. Completed the uh, bell crank assembly here. Looks pretty good. So what I found on this left uh, bell crank pivot assembly is that it's, uh, when I actually tighten up the bolt here in between uh, with this uh, spacer in between here, it's still a little bit too tight um, against the bearings on the inside here and the flanges of the bearings. Um, and so the instructions say to use paper shims uh, to, to widen that gap just a little tiny bit more than what this uh, spacer would provide. Uh, and so what I've done is I've got a piece of computer paper here that I folded four times and I've traced uh, around the outside of my spacer here. Um, and so I'm just going to go ahead and cut this out so I have four shims. Uh, I'll try it first with uh, just one and see if that fits okay. If it's fine, then I won't even bother with the rest, but they'll already be cut if I do need more. All right, and now I have four paper shims uh, that I can go ahead and use uh, in my assembly here. All right, that actually feels pretty good with just uh, one paper shim in there. So I think I'm just gonna leave it there. It's got just a little tiny bit of drag on it. Um, and it moves fairly freely. I don't have any side to side motion at all really to speak of here now. Um, going this direction. Feels actually really snug in there. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and replace out this uh, nut here. I'll put a little bit more grease in here along the bearings and along the bell crank and uh, just uh, reassemble it all with a brand new nut on there to keep that all in place. But it uh, feels pretty good. All right, so it's probably worth just taking a second and talking about how this all fits together. So this is the, the bell crank right here. It's just a plate um, that looks like this. And then it has a bolt that goes through a bushing, and then it goes through the plate, and then it goes through another bushing, and then there's a bolt that you tighten down and kind of cramp all of that together. So all of this is gonna move as one piece. Um, so if you watch this right here, as I move this, you'll see that the bolt here moves along with it. Those steel bushings, they're stainless steel down here on the inside, um, right here. Those steel bushings are down inside of here. You can see this bronze uh, bushing that's down inside of here. It's flanged, so it's got a bigger flat spot on the end of it. Um, and the stainless steel rubs into that. Um, the, the bronze is obviously, is obviously much softer than the stainless steel is, so as the stainless steel moves across the face of it, uh, the bronze gives way and it acts as a bushing. It actually uh, sort of lubricates the, uh, the steel as it runs across it um, and will form to the shape of the steel. So on my build here, when I put the bolt through and tightened it down, the nut actually hit the bottom of the threads um, on this bolt before it actually pressed up and actually um, tightened down on those uh, stainless steel flanges. And so it was just rotating freely, this aluminum part here was uh, rotating freely along the uh, stainless steel, which is bad, you don't want that to happen. Because what happens is this aluminum will eventually just wear through. So what I did to fix that, and I went ahead and put just a regular um, AN3 washer over the top. So this went through came out the other side, washer, and then I put on the uh, 
um, the castle nut. And then I put my cotter pin in place here. Um, had I not done that, the cotter pin actually might have been a little bit too far out also, so it might not have had a very good grip uh, against the cotter pin. So adding this uh, washer in here also bumped the nut out just a little bit and made the uh, cotter pin fit more in between these uh, castleized areas here on the nut. Well, that's all I have for this one. It was a fairly simple uh, assembly to put together. Um, hopefully uh, it's <laughs> demystified it a little bit. It's really not a very difficult part to put together, but I uh, thought I would demonstrate uh, my take on it. If you're still with me, thanks for hanging out with me to the end. And uh, if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing and we'll see you on the next one. See ya.